WGMB Television, Honolulu, Hawaii. It's 9 o'clock. Connected via the internet, a group of former podcasters are inexplicably transported into the game they were about to play. Now, trapped inside the world of Warcraft and hunted by role players, they do the only thing they can make a show. Did he just go through his door? Did he just go through his office door? Dude. Dude, what, is this, what does this even mean, Mike? Did he, like, did the dude just commit suicide? What the heck? He's no, not his gone. monitor's out. His, his, his whole office is, like, static. There's nothing on his screen. Look at his screen. There's nothing on it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you hear, do you hear that? It's coming crossover chill. It's coming from his screen. Eloy and Man, even when he's gone, he's not quiet as he. What? <laughs> what is that? There is nothing. Wait, listen to, to that. What is fear. that? There is only peace what? through the door. He wants us to I think he wants us to go through the and door. Some other stuff that I not How do we know this isn't his ghost? Right I don't know if I want to if I want to trust this. <laughs> it's not that scary. I don't I don't know if I would trust this. There's snacks through the door. I mean, look, we we took a wormhole to get here, so maybe this is just going to work out. Maybe some drinks. I mean, I I hear him. That's some him. Fun times with your pal. Infernal Bill. I only got a little a little ways to get to level 18, man. What? Let's just stick around. What are you talking about? There is peace in the land. <laughs> Dude, I'm going. I'm gonna give it a shot. I want out of this game. Maybe this maybe he's back. Maybe he's back home and we can get out. I'm leaving. Come on, come on. I only got a couple bars. I can't do the show without you. Fine. Join us. What? Hello, gentlemen. Welcome. Bill. Hey. What? So there is life on the other side, apparently. Yes, what? indeed, and it's delightful. What are Welcome you? to the tiki bar, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, it is a bar. Look at that. This is insane. Indeed. I love this. Is this. Beautiful. I love this. We've all had a change of outfit. And our, and our, all I know, I the decor, I all like I know Gilligan. is I decided to go through the door and it was one of the best decisions I ever made. I went through the door, I got a change of clothes that's far more comfortable. It's delightful. Yeah, you got a delightful pipe? This is all right. Hawkeye's got some sunglasses. I got, guys, I got laid. I got laid everywhere. There's <laughs> lays on my Finally. mic. Finally. Yeah, very close. Very you know we're on a TV. I'm on a TV now. Oh, yeah. Hawkeye, old chap, what are you wearing? I'm clearly in Hawaii in some kind of tiki outfit. Like, this is, this is all right. It's pretty. Dope. So we had it to go through. We had to go through this wormhole to get to the game, but now we have a different wormhole to get to the bar. I like it. I like. I like how uh, Bill's get up is basically 1960s bachelor pad. <laughs> like I ended up in like the 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 1930s like Hawaii like Polynesian club. Monin's like in like I don't know, like Hawaii, Florida. 
Like he's in, he's in like Gilligan. The, I'm in Gilligan he's like, mode. He's like the elbow room, and then Bill's over there in like the 1960s bachelor pad with like his collection of fine books on the shelf over there <laughs> and a pipe. Welcome. This is, Hello. suits our personalities well, I think. It kind of, it kind of <laughs> nailed the the ethos of the of the cast, if you will. Well, I'll tell you what, if there's one thing that uh, transferring interdimensionally through a wormhole at the whispered, disembodied voice of my friend Bill and ending up in a Polynesian 1950s-style tiki lounge uh, does for me, that was a mouthful, it makes, me, it makes me very thirsty. And luckily enough, this was the Where last thing I grabbed before and I got up bar. off of the seat. Oh, thank and I, goodness. I know, and I carried this through the wormhole. I didn't realize we were going. I figured, I figured, you know, we could have ended up on, like, a desert or something. Like a desert planet. Yeah. And I I'm wanted to make sure that. that we could survive. But we're here surrounded by this amazing assortment of bourbons and what looks like all sorts of fruits and rums. I think we could make some incredible drinks here. I kind of want to stay here. Frankly, yes. I'm surprised with everything around us that nothing's talking to us yet, but maybe we shouldn't <laughs> yet push that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, I think we yeah, know, you know I think we know what we're drinking, but for the sake of asking, what are we drinking? <laughs> Alright, so we are drinking uh, New Holland Brewings. Dragon's Milk Stout uh, that is aged in oak bourbon barrels after it's brewed. But I'm drinking my Dragon's I Milk see. Stout out of this handy glass I just picked up off the bar in a straw. I don't always drink beer out of a straw, <laughs> but when I do, but when I, do. I drink it out of a tiki glass. <laughs> Stay thirsty, my friend. <laughs> Mine also says in the back of it that it is vintage 2012. Vintage 2012. Wow. That's insane. Really? Yeah. So. Too bad. Too bad. It probably doesn't keep aging in the bottle. Uh, maybe. It, so wait, how how many <laughs> years? Out. I wonder. Was it aged in the? Uh, yeah. Wait. Or, what was KBS? What percentage was KBS? It was like fifteen, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, so we can drink more bad. of this. <laughs> maybe. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> that's okay, the idea. Okay. Instead of cheers, a huma lumpa lumpa. Huma huma lumpa lumpa. Very toasted. I mean, I would say that the the I get a lot more of the burnt flavor out of this one than I do out of um, other stouts like the KBS or even a Guinness burnt. by way of contrast. Yeah. What do you mean by burnt? Burnt. It's got kind of that um, I don't know, like a malty, toasted kind of taste to it. I bet you anything that's the oak. You want to bet? Could be. What temperature are you drinking that, Bill? Is it room temperature or is it cold? Slightly chilled. It's 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 a little colder than room temperature. Hmm. See, oh. I, I don't get a lot of oak. I get vanilla. I get a lot of really? vanilla. Yeah. I get more chocolate. This is weird. I get I get chocolate, like cocoa nibs, d dark chocolate, like dark dark chocolate from it. I wonder if, I wonder if. The fact that mine had a vintage on the back of it, um, I, I, oh, I wonder if it differs year to year based on uh, the oak barrels that are used. I wonder uh, the staves, perhaps that are, that are that are used in it. Um, that sort of thing. I wonder if the aging process affects the flavor of it as it ages. Yeah, between temperature and mine's bottled 731 of 19, and yours yeah. is from 2012, and Bill's got a cold one, and I don't know when his was bottled, but. Maybe we're all getting a little different experience on this. It's Which interesting. is interesting because then it's more like wine than it is yeah. beer. Hmm. Well, isn't that what they say with age stuff that's beer that's aged in barrels? Like it is kind of wineish in, in the respect that it gets complex. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could, and it, this, let's be honest, this is a very complex beer. Uh, I would give this. I would give this beer a. I would give this an eight. All right, I, hmm. I too uh, would give this beer an eight. I think that's a very that's a fair that's a fair rating for this. Um, as you'll see uh, down there on our tiki table, uh, it's poured into a, a snifter, like a brandy snifter. That is the proper way to drink this beer. This is not a shoot it, dump it, and leave it session beer and go back for another one. Uh, as Hawkeye said earlier to me today, this is like, dude, I can't drink 
three of these tonight because you would be <laughs> loaded if you did that. <laughs> It'd be a KBS situation. Yeah, it would be. Again. We'd be screaming here in the tiki bar. But, you know, that is that's that is sort of the nature of a, of a tiki lounge. Anyways, Bill, what do you got? We got eight, eight, and? Comparing it to KBS. I thought KBS was delicious. Um, I wouldn't say this beer is delicious. I, I think it's a little bit um, almost too complex. It's it's um, Parts of it are a bit overpowering in terms of drinkability. In fact, I think I enjoy it more when I take very little sips, almost like I'm drinking a whiskey, and sort of, you know, swish it around a bit and get all the flavor out of it. Given the fact that it's, I wouldn't expect that out of a beer, I'm going to rate this a little bit lower. I'm going to rate this about a sep, I would say. So I really like the KBS. I could drink KBS all day, any day, loved it. This one, I have to be in the right mood to drink it, and I have to be in a mood where I don't want to drink a lot of it. Yeah, I agree. What if I told you the KBS had 1,500 calories per bottle, and this one only had 1,000? <laughs> Is that true? KBS I don't had know. 1,500 I'm totally, I'm totally making that up. But would that change your score? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bill, you should have done that whole review with the pipe in your mouth. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I would say old times that this... Dragon's milk is just like the boys used to drink down at the club. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah, Hold on just yeah. a moment. Sell everything! Sell all the pork bellies you have! And buy orange juice! Oranges! Sorry. Indeed. Gentlemen? Right, right, sir. To evil! Fellow. To evil! To evil! <laughs> to evil. Have you moved all your assets offshore for the coming <laughs> collapse that we've orchestrated? <laughs> Indeed we have. <laughs> going to try something crazy. Uh oh. I got Brace yourself. I got I got my my tiki glass here and I got from I just pulled from the bar back there uh, a fine bottle of Jefferson's Ocean Wait a minute bourbon. And I'm gonna take some of this bourbon and I'm gonna dump it into my oak bourbon barrel aged Alright. Hold on. Uh, experiment time. <laughs> experiment time. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's good. That's right. what good. Hold on. enough. Hold, hold. Oh, that hold. just made that that made that whole thing better. I think we have a I'm new going, drink. I'm going to get one. Well, hold on. <laughs> just get your own off the well, bar. If you're, hey. Yeah, nice. that's what I did. Oh. That's what I did. Are they gonna get mad if we take stuff off the bar? Usually, who has got like good it. ones? Who is I they? I reached back off the bar and I ended up getting like scotch that's not that's not that's good. not bad i dare that's you a... i dare you to put some what is that glenmorangi what well Tom, i'll tell you this looks like glenmorangi aged 10 years <laughs> nice <laughs> all right oh. if i were you i would dump that into into your dragon's milk and see how it tastes because i am telling really? you right now jefferson's ocean bourbon a little bit about i don't know Less than a less than a full shot into this uh, mixture yeah. here into the dragon's milk is freaking fantastic. All right, let me it open just this accentuates up. Hold on. the bourbon notes that are already in it. It becomes like a drink. I got. Wait I've for got it. A, wait for it. All right. Okay. Nice, nice. <laughs> Good job. I've got a special bottle of Grass Widow from Two James Distillery in Detroit. Nice. My goodness. You guys, you guys only get local Proof. That's because Michigan, uh, Infernal Bill, is the great beer state. Now one of the highest producing brewery states in the country. That and also, really, so really, really quality spirits. Everything really now, quality too. spirits. Yeah, dude. You don't even know. You, Two need James. To, you need to move. If we ever get out of this trapped existence we're in, which frankly being in here makes me not really care as much. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is all this right. Is, yeah, so. This is wildly better. Like, nothing's trying to kill us yeah. in here. I don't need I mean, to level you know, in here. The, pre the right. pressure of the game is off. Like, there's no there's no Warcraft in this episode of the show. We're just kicking back. <laughs> pressure. This is great. Yeah, this is good. I and like we're it. glad that right. you're here with us. So Thanks, how much everybody. are we putting in here? I, I put only a little. That's a lot. It depends Holy how much crap, you have in there. <laughs> he just dumped a lot in there. All right, I'm interested. I went how to is, college. How is that? <laughs> 
Go big or go home. I do. I do like the good, little right? bourbon ad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you dumped a lot in there. I gotta say that actually is wildly better I told because you. it it, it, it <laughs> hey uh, mellowed it, it out like it took closer away to KBS now. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. Hey, um, it, it actually it, it totally is because it's it's much. It, it took away so much of the burnt flavor. To it. Forgive it us. Mel it made it really soft and brought out the, a lot of more of the chocolate flavor. Forgive this us, is New no Holland. Forgive us for what we're doing to your beer. It's we we gave it high <laughs> ra ra rankings. It, it's a great and delicious beer, but we're just saying. If you want to combine some things and make a delicious, delicious mix, this is Even how you better. do it. Yeah. And if you'd, if you'd like us to revisit this on a later show, New Holland, <laughs> yeah, you know where to reach <laughs> us. <laughs> this well, is think, called tavern casting your beer. I think we need to name this mix of um, whiskey slash bourbon with dragon's milk. The Aloy the dragon, hot guy Bill. The dragon's, dragon's <laughs> Really? <laughs> You know, really? this is why we edit this show right here. Really? This is this is why we always have to edit you out, Hawkeye. Really? <laughs> we should rename this to something tavern casting. Like the uh, I'd call this the Infernal Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I'd call this the Eloisius. <laughs> you know what remind look at the look at the picture of the dragon on the cover? That little dragon that's been killing me so much in World of Warcraft out by the mountains. <laughs> Red Ridge. What's, Red Ridge what, dragon. Red Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. These little yeah. dragons that just shoot fireballs at you. Oh. Like, which call this the Red Ridge dragon now that we have a little bird. The, the Red, Red Ridge. Red Ridge Whelp. To the Red Ridge Whelp. Red Ridge Whelp. Red Ridge Whelp. Uh, two parts dragon's milk, one part bourbon or whiskey of your choosing. Of your choosing. Are you sure it's two to one, or is it really like yeah. ten parts of beer and one part? Yeah, you know. Mine might be yeah. two to one. I'm trying to. I'm one. here for our. I'm here for our fans. I'm here for our, for, for our fellow watchers. <laughs> All right, so they're, we're they're, they're literally like <laughs> pouring it one and one. Like, yeah. This is strong. You know, we know these shows are only twenty minutes. We started watching it, and five minutes in, we just completely blacked out. Tiki Lounge, which is kind of a new thing for us. Actually, it's kind of a new old thing for us because this is a lot closer without playing World of Warcraft to what we did in the old Tavern Cast. We're just now doing it live. In fact, if you really want to know a secret behind the scenes thing, this uh -oh. sort of arrangement here was something we toyed with doing in a live set with Mike and I sitting on chairs in front of a backdrop that would be very similar to what you see behind us here with Bill on a TV very similar to the Philco television set he's on coming in from Los Angeles and we were going to yeah. do like a live red green kind of thing. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. So what's the best tiki bar you guys have been in? From out in the real world when we were out there. Uh, That's the, a good question. Mine is the Maikai in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The, the Maikai. Mai it is a it is what it is now I think the last remaining period Tiki Lounge in the United States. So, in other words, it's the last Tiki Palace, Tiki, like, full-on palace with, like, the indoor volcano and a swimming pool and the whole nine yards in the United States. They used to have these all over the United States in the 50s and 60s. And there was a place in, of all places, Columbus, Ohio, called the Kahiki Lounge. And that place was the second to last place, and it closed several years ago. The Maikai still has dancers and like Chinese food that they call like Polynesian island food and a swimming pool and a volcano that goes off and that place was like stepping back in the past that was going back to the heyday of of actual tiki lounge culture are you it, sure you the Tonga room in San Francisco the Tonga room's got the swimming pool it's got the volcano it's got the rain it's got the well, food to my memory, Mai Kai was better, but now that you're saying it, I forgot all about the rain and everything. I forgot about that. That was awesome, yeah. actually. You know, I got to say that it amuses me to no end the fact that the best tiki rooms that you guys are referring to are either in Fort Lauderdale, Ohio, or San Francisco, and not in Hawaii. 
You know, I mean, I've never would, been to Hawaii. Uh, wouldn't like the best tiki room be in Hawaii? No, because the the whole tiki thing is a sham. It's a it's a hodgepodge of Polynesian and Hawaiian and and South <coughs> Island type South Pacific Island culture. Tiki is the pushback on the traditional like spirit like oh we gotta do the mixology and all that stuff where it's very straight laced it's very like involved it's very crafty tiki is kind of the pushback on that saying eh come hang out have some fun have some sugary drinks and it's a good time it totally makes sense in fact it's got some degree of appeal I totally agree like you know cast off the normal modern bar and go to something that's a bit of a throwback and that's totally opposite of what everything is today it's yeah. a good idea. Tiki, yeah. Tiki, in its original inception, was brought back from the South Pacific after World War II, and the guys brought it back to relive the time that they were in the South Pacific. And so they brought this like homogenized fantasy version of the South Seas. And then when there was nothing then, like a day, right? Man, there you go. And then when Hawaii the came in as one, as the 50th state, there was this big like, oh my God, Hawaii! It's so beautiful. It's paradise. It's America now. Uh, much to the chagrin of the Hawaiians, I'm sure. And, um, you know, they brought it all together, and they were like, let's... It, it became like Middle America's escape. Oh, here, let me complete your guard. Oh, thank you. Hope you don't mind, Ozzy. This is an old Hawaiian custom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. Right? So places like Ohio and Michigan and cold places, right. Cleveland, had all these tiki lounges open right. up. And people would, like, go there in the middle of winter, and there were no windows in these places, and they had, like, waterfalls, and it rained from the roof, and there were pools and all this stuff, and they'd play this awesome, like, exotica, Martin Denny, faux Hawaiian (laughs) jazz music, and everybody just get lit, and they drink these crazy drinks, and... Honestly, I remember even growing up, and my grandpa in his basement had a bunch of tiki stuff down there. It was like a thing in people's houses. They had, like, Whitco furniture, and they had little tiki gods and a little, you know, tiki glass. This was a thing for people in the 50s, <laughs> 50s and 60s. Back in my day, yeah. we used to have tiki all in the basement. It reminded us of the Great War. And when, and when we would go down in the basement, it was like a trip to the South Pacific. It was. And it was an escape from the mundane work a day, cold outside, dreary. Well, and that's we why we need it today. Downstairs. That's why Eight we need step. to return to it. All, everything you said, Bryce, around like, hey, culturally it was it was brought in as like, hey, a comfort type bar type thing. Actually it makes a ton of sense. But like in if if we zoom forward to like today, it, it's a counterculture movement against, you know, like straight lace mixologist type stuff. Like actually, that makes a ton of sense too. It's it's almost like we could use tiki as the counter to whatever that is too formal or too. Sorry, are you are you busy? Are you getting? I'm getting. You just stole more off the bar. You know, dude, they're gonna yell at us. Who is they? I think we're in your bar. I mean, I hear we're people, but I don't out. see anybody. This is sort of a self serve bar. I wonder if we'll ever have like a bartender in here at some point. San Francisco, like I brought up Tonga Room. Like that's a really interesting. Well, you know, big, you know, big production tiki bar. There's another one in in San Francisco that I found called the Pagan Room which was so much fun. It wasn't fully built out. They didn't have the full space, but man, drinks were strong. They had a volcano, right atmosphere, not too many people. It was awesome. They sacrificed a virgin at the top of the hour every hour. Every time. Every time. (laughs) You're getting the spirit of... above made an appearance at 11.59 every (laughs) night. No, no, no. This is not... (laughs) Satan is never involved in this. It's not a Satan thing. This would be like Pele and the Moai... And you know the the evil capricious gods of the South Islands that you know the, that sort of thing. So the I old see. god, the old ones, like Cthulhu, technically could be a tiki god. Is there a tiki bar in World of Warcraft that we could go to? Nah. Is there a tiki bar? Is Actually, there a oh, tiki technically, bar? technically yes. Technically yes. Um, uh, Booty Bay in Stranglethorn it has a lot of tiki elements to it. You're saying words now that bro- that Hawkeye's going like, no, those, that's a made no, so up word. There's no such thing as booty bay. Booty bay, booty bay really? buddy. And it's run <laughs> what by... Level, wait, it is, what level do I have to be to get there? Uh, like 40, 40 45, somewhere uh, in the right. ballpark. But, but bo- We're booty, going. Booty bay, <laughs> booty bay is lawlessness, no alliance, no horde. It's pirates. It's South Seas stuff. It's like... 
It's like Vegas plus organized <laughs> crime. You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> What what are what are your guys' thoughts on how this game is going? I think Hawkeye, I'm interested in your thoughts from the perspective of a complete newbie to the game and what your thoughts are on it. And then Bill and I, I'm sure, are going to have opinions on the game after coming back to it from you know 15 years ago, 13 years ago, something like that. How how close to the 2005 release is the game that we're playing today? It seems. Almost exact to me. Yeah, it's With, very close. Very close. In fact, I've played very little retail. So my experience of the game is I played the game that we're currently playing a lot back in the day, and then they added sort of additional layers to or additional areas that you could go to, and I played those less and less. So I'm very familiar, though it's still coming back to me with what we're currently playing, which is WoW Classic. It, <clears throat> in fact, I gotta say, I am enjoying this game tremendously. Like, it brings me back. I think it's the right difficulty level. It remind again, in terms of it's hard to play. Um, it reminds me of why I enjoyed it so much back in the day. And I was asking my daughter, who's now 17, um, and she saw me playing it, and she goes like, oh, wow, you're, you're playing World of Warcraft. She says, I tried to play it, but eh, I just I didn't really like it all that much. She she couldn't get into it. Interesting. And I, yeah, and which I thought was interesting. I'm like I I told her I love it. It's hard. It's it's um it, it's really unforgiving, but it's vast. And she says, yeah, you know, I just um it just wasn't gripping her in the same way. She plays the the up to date WoW, right? The retail WoW. I mean, she doesn't spend like a million hours on it, but you know, she'll dabble. She's played all the expansions, and she in, she was saying that she enjoys retail WoW more than classic WoW. I'll tell I'll tell you what, Hawkeye. If you played retail <coughs> WoW, you would see a vast difference in um, graphics uh, for one, but in gameplay for two, a vast difference. It's that it, retail is not classic at all. So I know you, like I, play on sort of a gimped computer. It looks like you're playing on a, a Mac laptop, and I'm playing on a lap, uh, a Mac, and um, a lap. <laughs> a I'm not lap. Playing, you're playing in your lap. That's, I'm playing on that's a Mac. That's dope, man. You're playing with your lap. And that's <laughs> more. Yeah, this the, is um, what happens at a tiki bar, Dragon's ladies and milk. gentlemen. This is, this is why they go back all the way back in time as being a classic bar. So I'll tell you, I for a summer project for my son years ago, we built him a gaming computer, and it and and over the years we've added components to it. So <clears throat> at this point, it's got three screens, and it's got a really great graphics card, and it's got all kinds of good memory, and blah 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 blah. So he's off to college. So I said, Hey, do you mind if I like <laughs> log into your that's computer? Mine. That's yeah, mine. It's, just, it's perfect. I pay the so rent, like, boy. Hey. That's my computer. <clears throat> and so I I went onto his computer, and uh, so I I played. World of Warcraft on a gaming computer ever after having played World of Warcraft so many hours on my Mac and huge difference. I mean, all the settings were on ultra or, you know, uh, jacked up super high and you had 100 frames per second, no problem, didn't break a sweat at all the highest settings. It was awesome. It was gorgeous, right? I mean, you're running and like the, you know, you're in Westfall and the, the, you know, the leaves and the weeds, like, part ways as you're, like, walking through them. The, the roads are all overgrown. Like, the paths aren't, like, these clear linear paths. You, you step in water, and the rip, the water, like, ripples all the way through the pond. I mean, it's very, wait, very wait, wait, wait. This is, um, this is classic? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so, classic. so, actually, when, uh, when I have the settings on mine, um, I'm not running the settings at classic. I'm running the settings at ultra. And when, even when we, were, I'm playing the game now so when i run the settings back to classic i find that it's how i remember it but i actually enjoy playing it where you know the the fo foliage is splitting and the roads are all overgrown and everything else it's a lot more fun so i crank mine all the way up too yeah it, it looks awesome it still I mean, feels I... like classic though it just feels like so in the old days there was actually a thing you could do 
in Classic uh, that was, um, you could get all the settings above what they actually put it out there as high. So you would have, I, I don't I don't remember if there was an ultra setting in Original Classic, there was definitely high. So whatever the highest setting was, you could go higher than that through the use of, yes, Bill, a macro. And a macro could get it higher. So all these years, I've had that macro through all versions of WoW. It's it just, I, ju I titled it Graphics Max, and I got it off some website somewhere. And you click that hmm. macro, and all the settings go up. The ground clutter increases by tenfold. The view distance is all the way out. Uh, the graphic textures are all the way up. The um, uh, anti-aliasing is all the way up. So even back in the old days, like, that ground clutter and stuff was there. Let me let me ask you this, though. So, like... <laughs> I've got a I've got a Mac. I give it a strong Mac laptop from 2018, top of the line. You're talking about when you were back in 2005 on a gaming computer. Like, is this computer really not able to do the same stuff? No, you should be able to do it right now. Okay. Uh, well, it, but it is a Mac, and Macs processors it's a laptop. and it's, Mac and it's, processors it's a Mac are not laptop. known to deal well with. Uh, physics or graphic stuff, and I, I agree with you. Thirteen years later, I agree with you. And WoW is not; it was never a benchmark 12. killer or a benchmark maker, right? WoW's graphics are are always meant to be played by a, a large assortment of people with different systems. Um, so that laptop can probably handle it. But but to be frank, I don't know if my laptop could handle it. <laughs> or to be a voice is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. What do you actually think of the game itself, Hawkeye? As a guy who's never played it before. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of like casino fun where you, like, start to... You win a little bit, and then they, they hook you in, and, like, gameplay mechanics, like, That's for sure are there. Yeah. For sure. And so, like, I felt that pull a little bit, but um, the game itself is, is... It's a good time. It's, you know, the quests are fun. Like, there's a lot of quests which is nice and you can kind of go and do your thing and did you hear that ladies um, and gentlemen Hawkeye says the quests are fun they're fun <laughs> <laughs> alright yeah you maybe, know what like, questing is fun there's Come some on, grinding Bill. there's some grinding when there's you first went through it Bill when you first went through the game admit it the quests were pretty fun the whole world was fun the first well time. the first time. I have to say I was late to the party so as um, usual I felt rushed through the vast majority of World of Warcraft. But this time, I know what's awaiting me. And what's awaiting me is nonsense. And uh, the e the end game content is appealing, but I, I know when I get to the end game content, it's just more of a grind. It's just an endless grind. One thing, we're gonna do Black, we're gonna do Ubers, we're gonna do Black Rock Deaths, we're gonna do Molten Core maybe someday, you know, whenever. So what I, what the frame of mind that I have right now, particularly having and doing it through the Alliance is that <clears throat> I'm really enjoying reading the quest line. Like, there are some quests that make you run from one zone to the next zone and back and then over up into Stormwind. And, and then these sons of bitches make you go to Goldshire where there isn't even, like, a you know mass transit. So you got to walk to yes. frickin' Goldshire. <laughs> but you know what? I'm cool with that. I just, I just put it on auto-walk, and I go there, and I sort of get immersed Wait, in the Wait, what's auto-walk? Yeah, uh, numlock. Ah, oh, there's a way I can just walk this numlock. and not have to. Uh. Yeah, if you just hit numlock, it's not. No, it's not auto. It's not auto. It's not you got to steer. Auto. It's just like you cruise have to steer control. It. It's like cruise you know, control. You got to steer, but it'll. You can just like not have to hold the W key down. Button down. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. So you can sit back a little or, bit. Or but for you, sort of... not have to like go like this with the trackpad <laughs> consistently. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> mouse. I got a mouse. <laughs> Just Hawkeye. it's a Bluetooth. It's not a wired <laughs> mouse, by the way. It's not even. The, See, uh, I, I know think I'm, all the walking. I think the walking everywhere, by the way, makes it makes the world huge. It Actually, does. in uh, in retail, I I said. mean, I, I guarantee you. Well, no one watching this show is going to make fun of me over this. But if anyone who doesn't watch this show hears me, they're going to be like, "Oh my god, we're not going to watch this show anymore." These these guys are total noobs. They don't know anything about WoW. But when BFA came out, and actually for a good chunk of Legion. I stopped you. I stopped mounting up in the new zones. I didn't mount at all. I just walked everywhere. I just ran. Really? I ran everywhere. Why? Because I got to experience the zone the way the designers intended, and the world felt huge again overnight. And it was yeah. far more compelling. And I liked the game a lot more. To be honest with you, 
So once I, you know, once I cleared a zone, I didn't force myself to walk once I was familiar. But once, you know, to get to the point where I was doing the initial quests and to run around, I never, never used the map. Never. That is very much the experience I'm having right now with uh, the zones that I'm in on the Alliance side. Plus, add to that the fact that everybody is super nice. Now, I gotta yeah. say, one of the big one of the big criticisms yeah. is that there's no uh, dungeon finder. And in fact, What's a the dungeon, dungeon finder. Fi well, so in um, in retail, there is a feature where you can just click a button and it will put you into a dungeon with four other random people assigned to their oh. class. Like you choose what role you want to play and they'll do like a healer, um, a tank, and three DPS. And so you choose your role and they'll put you in it and you're just, hey everybody, and we're all assigned in it and you, you're in it like that, very quick, it's very convenient. Now, however, uh, you have to go back into the, sort of the world um, chat and you know or the zone chat and say is anybody looking for this quest or is anybody doing hogger is anybody doing x y or z and uh you know you'll find people and um i've done a few things now whether uh, dungeons or high level quests that were too difficult to do by yourself it's fantastic i've, I've not had i probably had three experiences with this now i'm just grouping up with random people everybody's super nice that's everybody a hallmark of like, classic it's because it's classic fantastic. Sport, because the nature of the game does not allow you to do these random pickup groups using an interface it forces you to have to be social with other people right I've how many even crazy if you had to things. guess if you had to guess how many people that you've run into were former like they're old time players of World of Warcraft. They went through classic and everything versus I bet it's brand new people. I bet you it's the majority. That's my vast feeling. majority. Yeah. I would bet it's like close to ninety five percent, right? I think because a lot of people have said that that classic's gonna die out. Like uh, you know, it's maybe got another two, three, four months at best and then it's gonna die out. And I, I think they're I, I mean honestly, I think they're probably right about that. I think I, I don't die out is the wrong word. I think you're going to see the spike that was the initial with Classic, and then it's going to kind of go like this, and then it's going to level. It'll That's stop what at she a said. <laughs> well, I, I sort of wonder what the point is, right? I mean, it, why the, are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> what do you do here? What what is your, what is your purpose? Says, yeah. says. <laughs> I'm still saying I, I, that I'm having way more fun <laughs> leveling than I think I will have when we reach end game content. So I'm not quite sure where this is all going. Depends. I can't imagine. So here, here, like I'm struggling getting from like level 16 to 7. Like it's, a, it's a lot of work. I see these people. There's like you can get up to level 60, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Yes. I yep. can't imagine the amount of effort and time that it takes to get into it. Like that's my takeaway from this. Is like they want you to stay in the game. They want you to like you know, get sucked in on the OCD level. It's like, oh, I got to do these three quests and then I'll sign off for the night kind of thing. But like, it's crazy how much headroom there is for like doing stuff around um, just sticking into it. Like you will burn hours and hours and hours and that's what I'm scared of. Like this thing, this does bring out the like to check the very yourself. thing you talked about when we started yeah. doing this show. Well, it's for it, sure. it is what I told you though, right? I I learned through um, uh, for people who didn't see Taverncast or didn't listen to Taverncast before. I did this whole experiment back in when Bill uh, was just just shortly after Bill joined us on the show, where I tried to like play solid through World of Warcraft for a month. I did like a thirty days Morgan Spurlock kind of thing to try to see like, you know, is this it game wasn't that long. No, it, I didn't, didn't make it I didn't make days. it that long. That was the that was the goal though. The goal was yeah. to do thirty days. Was it really thirty days? Yeah, I made it I think I made it seventeen days uh, <laughs> into it before I quit. I said I can't do this anymore. And that that little experiment proved to me a couple things. One, it's addictive, like gambling. Two, it's not healthy. Three, uh, it killed the game for me for a long time. Actually, it killed the rest of Burning Crusade, and it and it took a lot for me to even get back into Wrath of the Lich King. But I never came back to it like I had been before. In fact, I've never been back in WoW like I was when we originally played vanilla. But I learned something. I learned something that if you're not having at the moment, you're no longer having fun. Stop. 
because WoW has yeah. no value. The gear you get, right. it's valueless. It's There's right. no value to it at all. The only value in the gear that you get is fun. If it isn't fun to get the gear, like by doing a raid or, you know, crafting, if that's what you're into, or, you know, however you're doing it, questing, then it's it's worthless because... Boy, is, when, it, is, it, is it stop when it's not fun, or is it... What about the peer pressure, though? Like... Eh, ignore, you know, it. Like, I ignore it. Just I ignore mean, it. I mean, I mean, I can't ignore you guys. Like you guys are right in my ear. Yeah, but, you gotta love it. yeah. But let's let's be clear. <laughs> Hawkeye's like, can I just log in on the nights that we record and play for fifteen minutes and somehow keep up? No, Hawkeye. No, you can't. <laughs> Okay, you need to play 16 hours a week, Hawkeye, to the detriment of your job. Take what I take three days off a week. Three days is all I take off a week. I take three days off a week. I load myself up with bourbon. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just play. Okay, but I control. I control when I'm not having fun. I stop, Hawkeye. Bill, That's be it. Honest. I stop. Do you even work, Bill? Do you even work anymore? I do. I, I work very hard. <laughs> I, I work very hard. Yeah. So that I mean, that does bring up a lot of things. Where I mean. People obviously get addicted to this game. Um, it, all for all time, it was like this. Back in vanilla, it was a well-known thing. They called it World of War Crack back in the day. FYI. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's definitely a thing. But I think um, I think I think I think the amounts you're playing are not going to be addictive unless you you know you suddenly ramp it up. And you know you're you're noticing already that it, the, the the leveling slows down. Right? It's yeah. going to continue to slow down. So once How do you get to level sixty? You just keep playing over time, but the guys who are who are already there are, I'm assuming, are people that, like Bill said, maybe it's their only hobby. Maybe they sacrifice everything else except for playing WoW. So they, you know, they get up in the morning, they play a little while, they go to work, they, they come have, back from they work. They have like the the thing that they can just eat, like it's mounted to their neck. That they yeah, can, that uh, little trough a, a thing. Trough. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like a trough. trough. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I mean, I mean, I will. Some, I will have to say, some in, people, this is all. This is what they do, and there's nothing wrong with that. This is their main hobby. That's what they like that, to do. They like playing. That's cool. Wild, right? Like if that works out, that's. And awesome. maybe they don't have kids. Like maybe Bill, they don't have anything like, else. I think Bill, like he falls into this a little bit. Bill is know. like a guy. He's like <laughs> in a senior <laughs> citizen's home right now. All his, all his kids are all his kids are gone. <laughs> so he's he's moved out of his house. They live in right. a in like a, a retirees community. I mean, look at the guy. He's got like a, a vet, a, like a sweater on and a pipe. He's primed. He's primed his old books, <laughs> yes, Charles Dickens books, you know, reading The Hobbit here. Yeah, Bill's so primed you're for You're saying it. something, old chap? I couldn't yeah. quite hear you. Hey, Speak now, louder. Now that the ah. Illuminati has conquered the world, I have nothing else to do but to read my copy of The Hobbit and smoke my pipe. <laughs> I will have to say that when it comes to leveling in World of Warcraft, you're going to find that like it's not a pleasant experience it, you know blizzard tried very hard i'm reminded of the fact that blizzard really focused and made it very easy to level at lower levels in terms of doing the quest lines so if you do quests you're just going to naturally level but there are going to going to come moments or uh, certain areas where you're just going to run out of quests and you're going to be faced with either a um called grinding you're just gonna have to like kill mobs over and over and over and over which isn't the end of the world or you're gonna have to group up with other people and run dungeons because if you run dungeons that's pretty fun i mean you end up killing a ton of mobs you get a ton of loot that's relevant to your level that you're doing it at and um particularly if you're with the right group you go through it rather efficiently and it's a fun time and that's how you level up I disagree right. with you, actually, to a certain extent. Not about what, not about you what you said, wrong. not about what you said about how to do it, but that it's not fun. It wouldn't be fun did now. Did I say it wasn't fun? You said it wasn't fun. What did I say wasn't fun? I th I think you said it wasn't fun to to have to level up. That that the leveling gets not fun. And I remember distinctly being in vanilla and thinking the whole damn game was fun. Like that, yeah, sure. Yeah, but that grinding, was in 2005. Not fun. grinding can be not fun. It's, no, it's because yeah. everything was new. It's because everything yeah. was new, and that the world seemed immersive and 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 good. But it's not new anymore. It's not uh, new anymore for no, you. No, but is I'm playing. But I'm playing fun? with you guys. I'm playing right, with you guys. So it's and we're it's doing who you're a show with. around it, yeah, right? So it's I who mean, you're with. It's totally who you're with, and and that's this is the thing for that sure. I always try. Years ago, I remember having this conversation with, you know, people who didn't play the game, and I'm like, I'm like, you have to think of World of Warcraft. Not as a bunch of dudes sitting around playing a solo video game. In in a very real sense, and we I remember correct. we talked about this in the old days. It's it's a lot like a bowling league 
to an extent yeah. or some kind right. of thing like that's that. how i'm thinking about it i agree it's exactly yeah. you that's are, exactly what you are playing you were so instead of bowling you were playing world of warcraft it's a team sport in the sense that when you're doing dungeons and partying up and stuff there's a certain strategy you have to have a certain know-how you have to have a certain practice at it so you don't f it up and f it up for everybody else who's playing with you and there's a lot of socialization that goes on i tavern cast people this gentleman down here i did not know him before we started playing World of Warcraft. And now here he is, not just on the show, but like l fairly long term friends now because but of World of Warcraft. But he's got a pipe. Warcraft. He's actually got a pipe. And on now the he's show. just old and decrepit. We're all just yeah. aging. Right. But <laughs> that proves, um, and I've got other friends that I've met on World of Warcraft. So that proves that World of Warcraft is much more than just the game. It's not just about the game and like. I resting. met my wife. What? Not in World of Warcraft. <laughs> but I just wanted to say... <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'm just defending it because I do see the value of these things in a social tool. I would argue that, that MMOs like World of Warcraft are far more compelling as a social tool than something like Facebook. Far more compelling. The oh, interactions yeah. you have with people are actually far deeper and can be more meaningful in World of Warcraft because you're doing shared experiences on things uh, than, it, than it has anything to do with like social media. Yeah, but that's a pretty low bar to set. I mean, would you say it's more compelling than Match.com? <laughs> that is We're not. not that is not a. Yes. That's not where I would have gone. Um, <laughs> you know, though, depending on who you talk to, I remember that Karg always talked about the girl that he met on um, uh, EverQuest, and they Everquest, got married. Yeah. And they got married. Yeah. So yes. there's a lot of there's a lot of Warcraft brides out there. A lot of Warcraft relationships. You know, the other thing is you so guys are in I, Michigan. I don't know. I don't know. You guys are, so comparing it to a bowling league, I agree in many respects, but it's almost like a cross-border bowling league, right? Like, if I were in a bowling league now, it'd have to be not only people in California, but in my little town, because who's going to have to commute or want to commute? You guys are, you know, 2,500 miles away from me, and yet we can sort of interact on, on a meaningful basis that's not just a conference call. We can actually do a, an activity that's collective and... I mean, I don't think uh -huh. we've ever gotten together and done anything related to this game and not had a total blast. I agree with that. Totally. And it's totally, like, I don't I don't mean to discount, like, or I don't even, how do we get on this exactly? But, like, sorry. I've, I've now poured bourbon into my glass, <laughs> and I'm just drinking bourbon. So, because like, I don't okay. have any drinks. So, I can't, I, the thing with the game is that I never even remember a whole time when I was playing a game with you guys, and I didn't have, I love you guys I love so you guys. much. You guys, I love you guys, you guys so much. I love you guys so much. I love you guys so much. I love you guys I, I, I mean, if I had brothers, you guys like, would be my brother. I, 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 I summon an imp, I, and I summon a void walker, and I summon friendship. That's what I summon. <laughs> you summon so friendship. I, so I played this game, and I started wearing a Gilligan's Island hat. And it's just... Warcraft, man, I love it, man. Instead of my bone in there, I feel like at the end of the day, I've leveled up our friendship. Oh, I've leveled up our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this has been a fantabulous, tiki-filled episode of Taverncast Adventures. We so will see you. We will see you next time. You have an alt, alt character that I've at like level thirty six now, right? No, nah, you're <laughs> such a liar. No, seriously, I have like I've been playing it a lot. You have an alt at level thirty six. Well, that's bullshit. He's lying. <laughs> He's totally. Lying. Of course he is. I'm. I'm just looking at his face. <laughs> Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and right, adieu wait. to you, right. ladies of Spain. <laughs> <laughs>